everybody. Welcome to From Star to Stone with myself and Tracy Civic. I hope you're all having a great day. I just pressed the wrong button and Tracy's. <laughs> but we're here now, so you've got me. And uh, no way. So, good morning. Today we will be talking about traditions in a various in all those in various guises so without further ado here comes tracy if i'm pressing the button correctly yes i am and here she is say hello good morning yeah. <laughs> good morning sonia <laughs> we're already getting started and it's a beautiful day so we have a lot to talk about today we do lots and lots and lots so where would we like to start? Well, we're talking today about tradition. Quit laughing. Look at you. You're smirking. <laughs> I'm not laughing. Yes, you are. No, um, I'm just smiling benignly. Talk about old traditions that are being brought to the light. Um, people are using them today. And how that got started for us was that I had, well, Mervyn, you were here. I was. I was visiting. You were here, it was, yes. It was awesome. I and we were going that. through boxes, and we found a tulig. And we hung that up, and we also found the paper that came with it, which I had gotten maybe 10 years ago. Yeah. That's so, a tulig, by the yeah. way, for everybody. And... I, I fell in love with this when I, I found this young man at a festival and he had, did you just yawn on our show? No. Oh, he had <laughs> a ton of these and I, I just was drawn to them and I asked him, I said, what are these? And he explained to me that in Scandinavia, in, in the old days, they had when they had trouble with crops and abundance in all ways that they looked to the wizards. They looked for help, you know, to bring in prosperity and abundance and things for them and their families and communities. So the wizards came up with having this piece of wood, everything from the earth, stone, um, and they created this to be hung in the window and to be used as a, a protection to ward off any negativity uh, and bring in abundance and, and good things. So. so, yeah, and we found it. <laughs> we did. Yes, and it now hanging happily in your window again. Yes, it is. And the the great thing about it is the pride in the young man's face at the festival. He said, you know, a lot of people don't know about the Tulig. And and just so you know, we have that on our website, on the Star to Stone, on Facebook, a uh, picture and the total history uh, of the Tulig. And it's very interesting story, actually. And it's just really, it's the young man took pride in it and you could tell that it meant something to him. And, and I think that anyone, a craftsman would be blessed to share that kind of creativity and, and also have that pride in, in creating something um, of old for, for new, for the purpose of using it for the new. I'm getting really distracted by all of this technology. <laughs> that's the problem with technology yeah so everybody's going to have to wing it with us yes indeed welcome to the wing it into history show <laughs> that's that's a fact but that's it's a good point though yeah because um technology is distracting i remember those mugs well, anyway I, i'm quite surprised you don't have your unicorn mug there because I'm just saying. It would have taken up the whole screen. <laughs> um, anyway, back to my point. Technology is very distracting. Mm -hmm. And 
we have TVs in the corner, we've got computers. We, some of it is very useful. Mm -hmm. uh, like today, like this very moment, we're able to communicate with people and set forth ideas and things out into the world. Um, right. But in general, a lot of it is just plain distracting from just oh i have my own ideas about it that it kind of um what's the word i'm looking for it's not just distracting but it's sedating it stops us thinking it uh -huh. or there's all all that whereas the old traditions and even going into the old superstitions within them they uh -huh forces to think mm -hmm. they say are you doing something correctly are you living your life in the best way that you can you know perhaps you should think about things slightly differently and so on and so forth i mean the two league itself the the able to communicate with me. oh hello that was me <laughs> i did that i I I I do that all the time. I talk to myself. So well, I was trying to say hi to all of our people. So <laughs> now she's here and Jocelyn's here, and I just wanted to say hi. And I didn't know that the speaker or ram up would be like on. Um. <laughs> See technology. Yes. It, well, it, it it constantly tries to get in the way. Now I have it, so we're all good. Excellent. So, um, but yeah, it, it's a good it's a good thing when used in some ways and then the rest of the time it just forces us to it, it wants us to sit in front of the tv and look at all this stuff that people are you know businesses around the world are producing just to sell us small stuff and that's not good no what are you smiling at i'm gonna try it again oops i can't do that. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. So, every, hi, everybody, from this point on. Okay. Switch the, switch the little. I did. Oh. Bossy pants. So, oh. listen, the two leg. The two leg. Tell us, I... tell us about the two leg. I did. I thought there was more. Well, there is, but they can reference it on the page. There's more than I can remember to talk about. It was, it's just an ancient tradition. And I love, I love the way that, the, like I said, the young man was taking it seriously, mm. you know, because he, he kind of looked like an old wizard himself. Yeah. You know, and he was also um, an energy worker. Mm -hmm. And he took pride in that. And it's, as you can tell, can you bring up the picture again? Yep. There it is. You can tell that when he crafted it, there is like the worm, I, I think they call it wormwood. And he thought it was important to use copper around, around the crystals and stones and each one had its own meaning. And that's really important when they make those is that they are made with intent. They are made with the intent to be protective and healing. And um, I don't know. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful. It, it is. And there you go. It's a, the whole point that you've just brought in there with that intent and the healing and everything within it um there's jocelyn um it's thought through it's thought out it's thoughtful mm -hmm. whereas when we're talking about a lot of things that are made today for the mass market they are the one and the only consideration is how much money somebody's going to get mm -hmm. out of that. Right. Know, not the people at the bottom, because we're always the one who are giving them our money, which is always hard earned. So it, it's always the people at the top who have 
get the benefit out of it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it is comes from the you know the selling us more stuff. Mm-hmm. F- for what reason? It looks pretty, but eventually it will either end up in the drawer and never really see the light of day again, or it will end up in a charity store, or it will end up in the bin. And well, I'm going to stop you, Mr. Gloom and Doom, because. All right. <laughs> No, I'm not being doomy and gloomy. No, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, there's a lot of good craft, craftsmen out there who are doing it and being fair with their prices. And yes. I'm I'm and, talking about big business. Yes, big business. Big business people. Stop it. Do it, do it right. Do it right. Please. Thank you. You were, and craftsmen you were depressing are my doing. soul there for a minute. I was getting, I was getting a little low. <laughs> I'm Woo. sorry. Jeez. I, no. I didn't quite explain my point. I apologize. No, you did. Um, uh, um, in my head. Jocelyn asked, wouldn't it be better to make one of these yourself? I think that would be great to be able to do that. You know, if you're if you're if you're crafty, if you find a piece of wood but you're not sure what it's you know, I gave you two pieces mm-hmm. to take yeah. home that I have had for maybe twenty years. I mean, I knew that that was for something, something great, grand. I just didn't know what. And then when I showed you the two lig and all of that, it was it was just like, yes, that's what it's for. So yes, Jocelyn, I would say that if you put in the love and intent, for protection, for abundance, I think that that would be a great, a great idea. You know, I don't think we're limited. You know, we're, it's, it's all about uh, doing good things for yourself and your world. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but in regard to the craftsman, um, if you're not able to, there's no, there's absolutely no reason why you can't buy one. You know, be, mm-hmm. as long as it's made with the same intent as the mm-hmm. guy that you met. Yeah. You know, it, 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 that's the important part. Um, and so if you can do, if you can't find somebody that is doing it in the right way. Mm-hmm. Or buddy up, you know, yeah. maybe maybe you know how to do something and this other person doesn't know how to be crafty. I am like the most non-crafty human being, but I can, I can, um, I can for sure find the piece of wood. You did. I can yeah. pick out the, the gems and the stones and the beautiful crystals that I would like to adorn it, but I would like to sit with someone to actually know how to craft it. Mm -hmm. So buddy up with your friends, have some people over, have a two-leg night. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, how fun. So just that way, that energy that you all have, and it just, well, I I like that idea. I like that idea very much because then it's it's not just buddy up and you know it becomes not just for you it's a becomes a community mm-hmm. a community thing your community and i don't mean that in a societal way i mean that in your own family whether it be a, your spirit family or your blood family wh- whatever it doesn't matter it's it's that connect and you reconnect and you're connecting with everybody while you're doing it mm-hmm. as well you're exploring it equally together and that's just amazing when that right. happens and yeah. i've got i've got one um to show you um you i gave you one of these didn't i a corn dolly i love the corn dolly yes so we i'm going to try and get the picture up i did it a moment ago there we go i'm finding it Apparently, I'm not finding it, but never mind. I'll come up with oh, it. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, keep looking it, for it because it's really unique. And um, I'm, I'm, pr- I'm pressing the pressing the button. Now she uh, is not going to be impressed with this. She's not. Not today. <laughs> she really isn't. I'm really sorry, Nessie. Um, but we're figuring it out. Oh, that's how you do it. I did it. Anyway, so, um, so yeah, the corn dolly. 
and I'm going to put up a picture of two of mine. Um, it's a similar kind of of thing. I mean, this is traditionally from over here. There we go. I was going to say, I can't see it. There it is. I love there those. Those, uh, I mean, we call, they're called corn dollies, but they're not corn like you have over in the States, you know, with the, on the big long stuff, the sweet corn and, and whatnot. It's not that kind of, we, when we talk about corn over here, we use it in a, a generic form. It's a, um, it, it's a, a catch all term for perhaps, um, wheat or any other grain crop it's all corn so those two i made um thank you anyway so and what they are for i mean i'm starting to ramble I'm back on track so the corn dolly can be into traditional forms there's ones like that which are have a hollow in the middle or you can have figurative ones and this and there are other traditions re regarding corn dollies so what the figurative ones are they're used to represent the corn spirit and i like those but the what i my my favorites are those hollow ones the ones with a little hole in the, you know hollow in the middle because those ones are used to give the corn spirit a home for the winter inside where it's warm. You hang them up in your kitchen, wherever, by the door, so that corn spirit can come and go if it needs to. And when it's time to plant again, that corn dolly is then taken out into the fields and ploughed in to release the corn spirit back into the fields. And that's just one can of my Can you favorites. put the picture back up again? I Hi, can. Margaret. I'm going to say this wrong. Hi, Zane. Hi, Janice. Thank you for coming in today. Aren't they beautiful? There you go. And full size. He just, he handmade those. See, I am like totally jealous of this the ability to craft. I could go pick the corn and hand it to you, but no, I'm just not crafty. <laughs> it, the thing of it is, if you have an idea that you want to do, it just takes time and patience and you go off and learn how to do it. Well, you're talking to the girl that had Sanskrit word patience put on her sacred heart because there's none. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The cats are here. So, Hello, my little feline friends. Yeah. Hello, you all today. I was hoping they'd all sleep. Don't be silly. They want to join in. So tell me again about the, the corn dolly at the, har at the end of the harvest. Did well, you say that? Yeah. Yes. Um, when, Sorry. when I mean, all the all corn dollies were the traditionally the last sheaf of corn that was harvested that was saved, and corn dollies were made out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the corn dollies, like those uh, I showed you, I'll show you mm -hmm. the show you again. Um, okay. They they were for. Um, Oh, uh, they were to give the ho a home to the corn spirit for the winter. And then when the it was time to plant for the new season, they were all gathered up and plowed back into the field uh, for to release right. the corn spirit back into the land. OK. That's my favorite part of the story. Yeah. So, you know, uh, that's, uh, and it's one of my favorites. And I was I was looking at that for a long enough um hang on here's nikki everyone is crafting sometimes <laughs> it takes a little more to find it well nikki i will show up at your house and you will have the best laugh ever but it will be good laughter but it, i would be into that so um should i just totally like 
rock your brain and do another silly thing like say you know everybody that watches the show today will put your name into a pot and somebody will get a corn no. dolly for christmas no <laughs> I think it would be a great idea. You love it when I'm spontaneous like that. Okay, but it won't be happening at Christmas. <laughs> it'll, end, it'll end up with... Hey, how about for the new eventually. year? It'll yeah, eventually? Be, eventually, because I've got to find the... I've got to get the stuff first. Look at you sweating. <laughs> Look at the oh. things I try to get you oh. in. Oh. I think I need to go and lie down for a little while. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to get yelled at later. Okay. So I love those two the, the those two traditions, those two customs that are, are still out there today. Uh, when I was in England, I was really amazed at how how you embrace so much of your history. I know the the larger cities, it probably gets a little lost, but where we were out into the country and things like that, people really lived by the earth. They lived by their word. They lived by a lot of old traditions. And I love that. Yeah. And there's um, some of the ancient traditions are coming back mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. so than you would think. I'm right. going to tell you about a very special one now one that you don't know about this one's a surprise for you so so was the corn dolly giveaway just saying yeah well i'll get to work on it but you know give me time <laughs> that's all i ask just give me time <laughs> okay go ahead okay so the ancient ones our ancestors from this land and probably elsewhere around Europe and so on. One of the burial rituals was to use a long barrow. Have you heard of a long barrow? You're doing it again. I couldn't help it. I'm trying to message people. Okay, I'll be quiet. <laughs> I'm listening. Okay, a long barrow. That was when it was a, a a, a, an earth-mounded burial chamber for multiple occupants, shall we say. Let's put it like that. Okay. I've got a pick. Right, so it's basically... Is it like at Stonehenge? Mm, it's one of those. Okay. So that's a long barrow. It's a, an earthworks with a central chamber, and the, the remains of the ancestors are placed there, and that's where mm -hmm. they're, you know, and that's it. Newgrange... Uh, was I think one something like that, uh, or, or was it? Anyway, if everybody looks up Long Barrow, I've got a link as well that I can I'll post on the on the on the page um, where you can read about it. But that's a Long Barrow. Um, a few years ago, I think three, maybe four years ago, um, we've been somebody's built the first long barrow in five and a half thousand years for burials um, of um, well new usage basically that's one of, that's the inside of it so the old ways of um, respecting our ancestors are coming back in the old ways of doing it how's that for awesome that's very awesome yeah i love I'm that not, i'm not explaining it very well but um yeah this is what we used to do five and a half thousand years ago so a guy in wiltshire he decided to do it again and yeah yes no she it's a long barrow i I'm going to post a link and it will explain it a bit more effectively. Um, so, yeah, the, these traditions are basically what, where I'm coming from is um, they're in built, they're, they're insiders. We are the product of our ancestors. 
ultimately. And the old and ancient traditions, they're still there. Even in this modern world, those ancient ways, they live on. They just need to be allowed to surface again because a lot of the the traditions that we know about when you think about them and when you're talking about superstitions as well they're all about respect and protection respect for yourself respect for others respect for the land respect for the sky respect for the spirits around us um respect respect <laughs> that was me this time <laughs> your pick is gone no it's not it's still there I can okay because it. it's showing black on my side oh, you've frozen have That's, i yeah you've frozen hang on let me try this um let me do that and let me try that and how are you doing okay I've... you you've frozen I have. Yes, you've frozen. So we just you can you can just keep talking, and uh, you've gone completely. Oh. Oh well, it's me then. You're stuck with me for another fifteen or twenty seconds while Tracy comes back. I think she's back. And two, one, and ta da! Well, there you are. <laughs> it's like magic it's like magic i love that um, uh so yeah um so it's all about protecting the people around you your home your land and asking for help when you need it you know like um one of the irish fairy traditions that i've read about is that people would leave food for the fairies on the windowsill um to not only take care of the fairies but also in a way um garnering their help when it's needed mm -hmm. um there's a couple of really cool stories about fairies in Ireland. I mean, these are just super awesome and you're going to love them. So I'm going to tell you them. So um, there in Ireland, there is, when there's um, a mound in a field or they can be big, they can be small. Um, and for anybody in Ireland, if I'm saying this wrong, I do apologize. You can, shout at me but then give me the correct information this is as i understand it so um these are mounds earth mounds throughout the country and i was told it, it's a wrath that's its name it's a wrath and fairies live there and you never ever ever disturb the wrath R-A-T-H, I think it is, not with a W. That's a completely different thing. But, um, so, you never disturb it. You don't dig into it. You don't take anything from it without permission from the fairies. So, there was a guy in Ireland in the 90s. Um, I can't remember his name. But he was a big businessman, billionaire. And... He had hotels and he had a quarry. The quarry is the, 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 the main point here. He had a quarry that he wanted to extend, but there was an ancient burial mound there. Um, and with a, a megalithic stone. And he wanted to extend his, um, his quarry. So he just moved it he dug up the stone moved it to one of his hotels as a um a talking point kind of thing you know what i mean um and just plowed into 
you know, kept on extending his um, his quarry, which angered the fairies. The guy is bankrupt. He was a billionaire. Don't mess with fairies. And if you're going to have any interaction with them, be respectful. So that's one. That's one story. And there's another one, which uh, everybody's heard of John DeLorean. He made cars. He okay. set up his uh, car factory in Ireland. And uh, where he wanted to build his factory, there was a wrath. And he just built his factory there. He just destroyed everything around it and built his factory. And everybody knows what happened to him. So, you know, these traditions, you know, when it comes to the spirit world, with the spirits around us on this world, with fairies, you know, we have to be respectful. And our traditions teach us to do that. They teach us how to be respectful if we read them properly if we learn them properly rather you know they teach us respect i agree you know we, we were talking about traditions and all these things before we got on the show and something even the the simplest well it's not even a simple tradition but there's so many um you know every day let's say traditions that are lost and just the the way that um We'll use the word prayer, prayer over food, you know, prayer with mm. family before we, uh, you know, we take in our meal. And in ancient times that was brought up and, and, and it was happening and be, to bless our food, to thank, the, to thank the animal, to bless our food and to be appreciative to our belief system and the our families are the people that we gather with. But we, we all... You know, in, in today's world, it's very rare to see a family sitting around a table and giving thanks for their their food. I, I love watching um, some people out in public that uh, energetic workers, let's say energy workers who do Reiki over their food, um, blessing it, loving it, uh, thanking thanking all of it, you know, bringing that up and out, that that old tradition. And I love that because it raises the vibration of the food. It it blesses us. And we're actually taking a time out of our day to to kind of center, you know, to find that, that peaceful moment over what nourishes us. Yeah, absolutely. And it is, again, it's that respect for... Mm -hmm. I mean, everything on our plate um, was at some point alive mm -hmm. and had a spirit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we don't often take enough time to respect the life that was, that is now sharing, uh, not sharing, that that's now sustaining our own life mm -hmm. right. and I'm as guilty as everybody else in that because life gets quite um, what's the word of intense shall we mm -hmm. say overwhelming right overwhelming and we we just plow on just get through the day sometimes mm -hmm. and you've frozen again i did so, so we have to be as conscious of what we're doing and how yeah with what i mean I, conscious of what we're eating, what we're drinking, and so on. Uh, you've just got me again because Tracy's disappeared. She'll be back in a sec. But we need to be, like I say, conscious of everything that we're doing around us and being respectful so that, um, you know, we're, we're respecting the spirits of everything that was and 
respecting ourselves as well. Exactly. I think exactly. I may have repeated. Hang on. No, she's just brought up a good a good one there. Uh, in her culture, we believe the spirit or medicine of the food plant or animal lives through us when we eat it. Exactly. Continuing the life cycle. Exactly. So just taking a moment whether it be five seconds or a minute or five minutes just to honor everything that was is a good thing mm -hmm. doesn't have to take all day to do it just as long as we do it exactly margaret i think you're right i think we get too busy and then there are the people that you know i know that that do still do traditional prayers which is fine however you want to do it but it, a lot of the they just they don't feel the words it's just like they they you know it's about being present in that moment it's about really truly think being having a thankful heart and and blessing the food so it's you're right it's it's we get too busy or it's just re really repetitive and um it doesn't have as much meaning as it could so i like the thought of um raising the vibration through thankfulness and through energy and saying nourish me exactly and um dana when she comes on to her show in a little while she will again i mean she she often says about greeting the morning greeting the day mm -hmm. you know that's another an, another thing that we should all try to follow you know these are simple things mm -hmm. people used to do it all the time and now we're just rushing into the day and we were spoken about this in different ways for different mm -hmm. reasons for it, you know so let's just slow down a little bit yeah take, take an extra 10 seconds and let's think what we're doing well you, know. you got to see it here when when i wake up in the morning i go through the house i open up the curtains lift the blinds and i say good morning world exactly. and yeah. thank you for loving me and protecting me and i go you know i say good morning to the whole house and yeah. um i love the energy here you know because i do these little things that that i don't know i just feel like it's it's good positive message to put out there it is for me to say it for me to to say to the universe and spirit you know i appreciate this i appreciate my life i appreciate the protection i appreciate the view yes exactly um mm -hmm. and i do something similar myself where you know i it's easy easy and i've got a clearer head on the work day funnily enough i don't know why but when i step out of the house r ready to go to work it's easy for me to greet the day mm -hmm. because i'm i'm open to it i'm not thinking about what does mum need what i'm a, you know so you know that intense part of thing but so it um it's a, i've got a a moment of clarity when i can do that but i also when i do leave the house just put my hand on the wall and thank my house mm -hmm. thank my home for being our home and our sanctuary and for the protection that it gives us mm -hmm. you know um so i i do do it i should do it more i do right. it right you know so admitting that is at least I'm, I'm aware of it <laughs> so right right yeah. no I, I before you even entered the house when you got here you put your hand inside the the door well and and you 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 blessed it and you said a little prayer of your own and that that was really appreciated mm. um it's those little things it's i i even i got to a place where uh I found that uh, I, I thought of the word housewarming and where did that come from? And back in the olden days, they used to, and I believe this was back in Poland. Ta-da! Ta-da! So anyways, um, 
that they would, if anybody new came into town, they would give them a loaf of bread. And that was the way uh, that they started that tradition of giving gifts, you know, welcoming mm -hmm. people into the community, saying, we are willing to break bread with you. You are family. You're a friend. You're a part of that right. circle and protection. And um, it's all of those little things that we do that we, we don't know where it came from in the history. And I loved looking a lot of that up and, and finding it. And it was really yeah. amazing. Yeah, there's there's lots of little traditions about, you know, when you um, um entering a new home your new home i mean there's um one of them is lighting a candle mm -hmm. um lighting a candle to banish away any darkness or dark any entities that are there um and there's another one uh scattering coins on the floor Mm -hmm. you, you know, you walk as when you walk in, scattering coins on the floor to invite prosperity into that home. There's lots and lots of these things. I mean, those are just for individuals, but the ones that connect you with the community are far more powerful because you're joining joining that community, and you know, a new family around you not blood family like we say but spirit family, family mm -hmm. in spirit mm -hmm. and uh it's a uh, yeah, we 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 do need more of that we do right right um you know i mean when we're talking about protecting a home you you taught me one when i was there um with the selenite in front of the door mm -hmm. um and the you know or tourmaline but then there's the you can use salt um, to, you know, when you first go in, protect the protect the home. You you scatter salt on the um, over the door, mm -hmm. uh, the doorstep, and so on and so forth. So there's lots of little ones that we have forgotten about, but they're still there. In right. Some way. I didn't know that about the coins, and I see Charlotte's up here with the message about blessing her home as she leaves. And I was just thinking of you, Charlotte, because I remember I didn't know about the coins, and I remember we were at Reiki Share at her office, and um, it was I, I emptied my pockets. And I left him in the corner of her office. And it was funny when she moved her office, I said, did you take those coins? And she said, yes, I did. You know, and it was funny how it had a weird, strange feeling and connection. Yeah. And I didn't even know why. Yeah, it's, um, it's like I said earlier, these old traditions these old ways of thinking are all so they're ancestral they're th we're connected to them they are within us still and tracy's coming back again don't worry you're not going to be stuck with me on my own <laughs> i don't know what that is about we'll figure it out, <laughs> we'll figure it out down the line it'll be yeah. fine yeah so um so yeah all these, all these things. Oh, there's another one. Um, if you move home, leave your broom behind. The broom that you had in your last home, leave it where it was. And when you always buy a new broom for a new home, I think that's something to do with, you know, taking any old rubbish with you to your new home. You can leave it behind. Does that make sense? That's how yeah. I see. It. That's how yeah. I understand it, anyway. You know, it reminds me of that weird thing, and this is just random, but that's how we work. So, do you remember what was it that you're not supposed to do laundry on what day? Oh, uh, New Year's Day. Yes, I love. I think that's funny, and I love it because I don't want to do laundry on New okay. Year's Day. Yeah, that's. Um, you never do laundry on New Year's Day because you wash your look away for the year. Mm-hmm. See. So. 
So saying. how my life has changed since <laughs> I quit doing laundry on New Year's Day is amazing. <laughs> I actually wanted to be really careful with it, and I went like a week. I can't. Fault I didn't want. I, I didn't want to wash anything away. I I can't fault you for that. I mean, it's always better to be safe than sorry. Mm hmm. You know, just saying. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> oh dear. There we go. Now she. Um, but we have an idea of those ancient traditions. We just have to remember and add to our attentions to them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It is all about the intention that we have and everybody listening to this or the archive and every other show on star nations is uh there you go <laughs> every other every other show on star nations is or everybody listening to all of them is aware of it they're aware of the need to reconnect with old traditions. Mm -hmm. They're in, they're aware. They just have to find them. The one that, mm -hmm. the ones that connect with them. Mm -hmm. um, and then slowly, slowly they'll spread out again. And we will have a world that respects the land and the sky and the waters and the people, and the animals, and the trees, right, and, the birds, and so on, and so on, and so on. So it's, finding them is one thing, living with them is another, and then teaching the rest of the world about them is the final step. And then hopefully they'll take it on. Right. I think that's really the, the best part of being in our space our spiritual communities because we embrace each other and each other's traditions and ideas. And it's just, there's nothing like getting together in a community and being hand in hand and letting that, that energy flow from all yesterdays and up till today and just embracing one another on all spiritual levels. It just feels so good to share that kind of community and tradition and i i just lifts it lifts you up it makes you feel hopeful it makes you allows you to feel love and that's why i love my community exactly yes and speaking of community joni okay. mentioned to me about placing certain plants at your front door that mm -hmm. that is a tradition and you said that you also had knowledge of that. So what is it that you found in your in your research or whatever that you did on that? Because I I know rosemary mm -hmm. and I know lavender. I was going to say lavender. Um, mm -hmm. I mean lavender's well, um, you know quite a a plentiful plant is pretty mm -hmm. much everywhere. So lavender is one of the one of the main ones. Um, what else was that? I mean, the sage of various mm -hmm. um, different types. Um, and what else was the one of the ones that I like from here is is vervain. That's one of the ones I intend. I mean, that's quite a magical and medicinal plant. Um, <clears throat> that's Charlotte. Geraniums. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when we're doing this kind of thing, when we are talking about plants, then we have to be respectful to the area that where we are where we are whether it be the uk whether it be the us whether it be europe wherever we, we may be then from my point of view we need to be talking about plants for that particular area mm -hmm. so one of the problems that i that is what i see and i'm not saying it is 
it's just what I see, mm-hmm. is that um, especially during the Victorian era, we, you know, the British travelled the world and acquired plants from everywhere and they mm-hmm. brought them all back and they're in everybody's gardens and then they escaped and then the, you know, we've got problems with certain plants like Japanese knotweed in various areas. Um, rhododendrons if they're out in the wild they can kill off other plant life around them just so that you know for their own benefit so you have to be respectful to your land so if you're going to do that kind of thing you should only really have flora from your the area where you are mm-hmm. yes it yes Neshi, invade the invasion of plants you know non-native non-native plants and you know it is it is a difficult thing so yeah if you've got if you have if there's another one um from polly so there's lots of different ones that you can use in a traditional way but as long as it's traditional to the your country right rather yeah. than um, and in, uh, from from somewhere else in the world. And right. That's not saying that they're bad. It's mm-hmm. just I'm just saying that you should be you connecting to your land. So you, in your area, yeah, yeah, exactly. Hi, Polly Indigenous, Joe. Indigenous plants. That's the what I was looking for. Thank you, Neshi. Neshi mm-hmm. said it so much so, more succinctly than I did, but we got mm-hmm. there in the end. So you know what I mean. You speak of you spoke of uh, sage, and and that's one thing that the, an old tradition that we still use today. I mean, that luckily has not you know left us it is saging our homes, our each other, um, transmuting negativity into positive, high vibrational love and light. You know, just kind of turning that around for each other. I just there's so many things and so so many uh, different ways to do that. And um, I know that I always like to use white sage. I know that you like to use certain mm-hmm. things. So what is it that you like to use for cleansing an area? Well, this is this is where we get some crossover because although it's not native, the white sage and things are not native to the UK. Um, I like sage and I like Palo Santo. Mm-hmm. You know, I like the oil. I like the the little wood wooden sticks to burn. Mm-hmm. Um, so we this when you're talking i know we're talking traditions you can if it feels right um and you've learned something from another culture it's okay to use that in my opinion so i still like sage and i love palo santo i think that's just my most favorite scent in the whole world now you know i have a mm-hmm. i have a couple of little bottles of oil that i have a and i drop onto a cup a piece of wood um at night you know and it oh it, it does help me sleep it mm-hmm. really does and as a, the it was explained to me that the palo santo not only dispels negativity but it actually encourage, encourages positive energy in as well so it has a, a double effect yes and cedar you know cedar. as she said that about cedar i love cedar i grew up with uh, surrounded by cedar and um i again just whatever resonates with you whatever works for you it's just um it's an amazing beautiful tradition and frankincense and myrrh people still mm-hmm. use that for a lot of the the beautiful medicinal qualities that they have so yeah. It just brings that good positive energy in. Yeah. And so if you're respectful with it, it's fine. Mm-hmm. It, that's how I think of things. 
if you're respectful and you and if you're respectful for, to the tradition where uh, just for example the say your sage or the palo santo if you're respectful to that tradition then you're you're okay um it's when you just do things just because that it's problematic if you've thought about it if you've meditated on it if you have uh-huh. asked permission then you're okay to carry on and use use somebody else's tradition that's not quite what i mean but incorporate it that's better incorporate it into your own um practice so that there you are hello again i think you need to say your computer now you can't hear me at all can you hello oh well you're stuck with me people (laughs) oh dear unless i've disappeared i don't even know can anybody tell me if i'm still going anybody is anybody out there please listen to me oh well i'm going to keep going anyway so traditions are good finding your own way through them can be uh fun thank you neshi <laughs> i was just checking <laughs> uh she, I, i'm tracy's back she's back i know she's back i can see her moving <laughs> there she is it's it's weird we'll figure this out but i i love the i love using the computer the computer so we'll figure this out thank you everyone for your for your love and your patience <laughs> um appreciate that a lot so i hope everybody's just laughing <laughs> hi eve <laughs> oh dear we have so, had a great great show this morning great ideas fun. and yeah, and um fun. We're always fun. We are always fun. Hi, Tana. We've had a great group this morning, and everybody's Tana. getting ready for uh, Dana's show. As are we. Yes, Let's we be are. Honest. Yes. Let's be honest. We're all just getting ready for that. So, but yeah, so as I was saying, just to repeat myself, in, as I see things, learning your own traditions is is an important step on any spiritual path because it will uh, guide you and it will help you and you will learn from them and then the further down your path you you go you will learn of other people's traditions and <laughs> take down uh, sorry no she's just said take down the corn dolly picture that should help i didn't know it was still on i did take it down but anyway never mind do i look like one no funnily enough you i could make you one to hang around your neck did you just offer up to make one for no. one lucky person <laughs> in the chat room i think okay. everybody heard you okay jeez Dear, oh dear. You're going to quit this show with me, aren't you? <laughs> Tracy keeps offering up stuff. I have to deal with it. It's my giving heart. <laughs> it's my nature. It's Fair my enough. tradition. Well, there you go. I can't argue with that. Can I? I can't help it that you're the crafty yeah. one. Oh dear, oh dear. Hi, so, Kathy. So what was I saying? Yeah. And it, if you're doing it in a respectful and thoughtful way, and if it feels right, and if it will help you, then add to your own traditions with the peoples that you meet along the way. Yes. So, so one reached... lucky person out of this group today, F- okay. raw names will be the recipient of a corn dolly. Okay. That's a deal. We can All right. do that. Within this century. Yes, within this century. <laughs> so we're down to the last few seconds. All right. Thank you, Mervyn. 
Thank you, Tracy. So next up, which we've all been waiting for, is Dana. Oh. Um, oh. <laughs> and uh, the Mystic's Heart. Yes. So, thank you, everyone, for visiting with us every- this morning. Yes, it's been great fun. Thank you. And I hope you all have a wonderful, joyful, joyous, wonderful day. Peace and good things. Peace and love and awesomeness everywhere. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.